Well, good evening. Welcome to Wednesday evening recharge. If, if this is your first one, uh, we are especially grateful that you are here and that you have checked us out on Wednesday nights. So uh, what we do is we have a super short uh, service, uh, 20 minutes, 10 minutes of music, it's supposed to be seven minutes of preaching, but I creep up, up. The people like the short sermons, I know that, all right? Uh, and then we break up into our classes. So here in just a moment, as soon as I'm done, I'm gonna put the list of classes up on the screen. I'm gonna talk to you for just a moment about those. Uh, but turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Uh, as we uh, begin our, our recharge, I'm picking out a theme uh, I'll disclose the theme here, at least for the first part of, of uh, the first several weeks of recharge, uh, but I want to build this theme for us. In Matthew chapter 11, John, John the Baptist, has been put in prison. Now, listen, listen to what it says here, because I want to make uh, a very important point here. So John, is, he's in prison, and he heard the works of Christ, you, you would think that's, that's a good thing, right? Jesus is healing. He's doing all sorts of great things. When you read the Gospels, you, you, I mean, you hear like uh, demons are being cast out. This is awesome. But he sends word by his disciples and says, are you the expected one or shall we look to someone else? Now, what that means is that, one, John's discouraged, but two, is that things are not looking the way that John expected them to look. Jesus answered and said to him, go and report to John what you hear and see, that the blind receive sight and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. But then listen to this last part. And blessed is he who does not take offense at me. Jesus' ministry is not going according to expectation or anticipation. Now, a little conjecture. We know from Scripture that the Jews thoroughly expected the Messiah to throw off the Romans. But when you pay attention to the context here, this unmet expectation by John is much more about revival. In other words, not nearly as many people are responding to Jesus as was anticipated. When the Messiah comes, everyone's going to turn back to the Lord, right? It's going to sweep through the nation. Hearts are going to be broken. There was that, but not according to expectation. Listen to what John, are we supposed to look for someone else? And Jesus says, blessed is he who does not take a at me. If you continue down in the context, Jesus begins to explain these different places. They did not respond. They did not respond. Pick up in, in 25. It'll be on the screen, but if you're looking in your Bible, pick up in 25. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to infants. Now, what, what do you think the revealed things is? Well, that's the gospel, right? That's the salvation. That's turning to the Messiah. Yes, Father, for this way was <coughs> well-pleasing in your sight to hide the gospel from the wise and intelligent. Now, as you're thinking about wise and intelligent, you would think that he's going to say, you've hidden, it, you've hidden the gospel from the wise and intelligent, but you've revealed it to the, the dumb, the uneducated. And that's not what he says. He says, you've revealed them to infants. Now, you can't take that statement literal, right? It's not like the only people getting saved were all the infants. That would be a pretty bizarre scene. All through Israel, all the infants were saved, none of the adults. No, that's not what he's saying. So he's not using wise and intelligent in a straightforward manner here, okay? So let's look again at the context 
and, and see what gets unveiled. Listen to Jesus in 28. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Who are the ones who are coming to Jesus? The ones who are getting the gospel? Those who are weary and heavy laden. Those who want to learn from Jesus and those who come to find rest for your souls. That is what is in contrast to the wise and intelligent. In other words, wise and intelligent is a description of the proud, of the self-sufficient, of those who think they already have everything figured out and they are self-righteous. And the gospel is hidden from the proud. And this was well-pleasing in the Father's plan. Think of that. The main obstacle to the gospel as preached by the Son of God himself. Okay? I'm not saying we don't water it down in our culture and make it super easy, but as preached by the Son of God himself, blessed is he who does not take offense at me because the gospel is offensive. And pride is the very thing that stands in our way. So this fall... We are going to start Recharge, and I want to go a quick dive into what is so awful about pride. That's where we're going to go over the next several weeks. You know, pride is the only disease known to man that makes everyone else sick except the one who has it. (laughs) There was an army colonel Let's go ahead and make this guy a a little more alive. Let's call him Army Colonel Ball. He had just been promoted to colonel. And he he was sitting in his new office and someone knocked at the door. Said, this is Private Johnson. May I see you, sir? Uh, just Just a minute, just a minute. The colonel quickly, wanting to look impressive, he picked up the phone and said real loud, yes, Mr. President, I understand, Mr. President. Uh, We will take care of that right away, Mr. President. You know, he wasn't really talking to the president, but he wanted to seem very important. He wanted to appear bigger than what he really was. The colonel said, Mr. President, give me just one second. Uh, Come in, private, uh, but make it quick. I'm on the phone with the president. What is it that you want? Well, sir, I just came in to connect your phone. So we're going to be taking a look at the way that pride hides in in all the corners of our lives. Now, you may think that's not very uplifting or encouraging. I don't feel very recharged whenever you're just going to hammer me on pride. But let me say this. This will encourage all of us. Because if pride is the number one hindrance to the gospel in our lives then removing that as an obstacle, right, gives us Jesus, more Jesus, okay? And on top of that, as we walk through what we will highlight, did you know that the Bible, it doesn't say, do not boast in anything. The Bible says, do not boast in yourself. Do you know we are actually called to boast in Christ, in what Christ has done. So there is boasting, this longing to be excited and to be charged. for It is boasting in Christ. So we're going to talk about that. I want to close with this last scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. <clears throat> for the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And then further down, for consider your calling, brethren. He's talking to the church that there were not many wise according to the flesh, 
Not many mighty, not many noble, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world. That's you and me, okay? That's me. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong and the base things of the world and the despised. God has chosen the things that are not so that he may nullify the things that are, so that no man may boast before God. But by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Boast in the Lord. You guys pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, As we take aim this fall at our pride, Father, that is a a good thing because we will be able to see you clearly and we will be able to see Christ clearly. We will be able to understand and take by grace through faith all that Christ has done on our behalf and be able to walk in freedom. Not, not in self-righteousness, not in trying to do things by our own efforts, but through you. And so, Father, we pray that your spirit would take aim at our pride. Take aim at our pride so that we can know you more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, this is a quick list of the classes. <coughs> um, every one of these classes... Uh, it is over in what we call the FLB. Even uh, the library and fellowship hall, they're all over in the FLB. By the way, choir starts immediately following. Um, and so let me give a quick plug. If you're looking, thinking about choir, they're starting to work on Christmas stuff here really soon. They're going to have a retreat for that. We would love for you to check them out on Wednesday nights, okay? Uh, they meet back here. You can go either side. Um, The heart of God in the gospel, that is Daniel in the fellowship hall. Uh, If you get in there, you can um, help clean up tables because lots of people were still eating, okay? Grandparenting matters. That is the library. As soon as you walk in, the big room to the right is the library, okay? Financial Peace University, FLB 200. So that's in the FLB, upstairs 200. Uh, Financial Peace has a cost associated with it, but if you are here tonight and you want to check that out, you can go check it out uh, for the first couple weeks. Check that out, okay? Um, While I'm at it, same with Soul Care down at the bottom. I know it says closed to the public. Um, There is a cost associated with that, uh, but if you want to check that out tonight, you can check that out. And if that that is uh, a Christian biblical-based counseling program uh, that we are trying to, uh, we have a first cohort that's gone through it, but we want to offer on Wednesday nights uh, believers that have gotten trained to be able to offer free biblical counseling on Wednesday nights. So think about this. We have the awesomeness of dinner, recharge, and then we break up into classes and we're able to say to the community, by the way, we have free biblical counseling. Go to First Baptist. They care about meeting you in your needs, okay? That's what soul care is. That's on the bottom, okay? The uh, foster to adopt class, uh, they're amazing, continue to grow. I don't know where we're gonna put you guys, but uh, up there, they're an incredible group. And then the women's Bible study up there, okay? So if you have any questions, I'm happy to help you with those, but you are dismissed.